Africa, working solutions, entrepreneurship, and innovation is the way to go for Africa. If you're not training your child after you are gone, where will people go? If you invented an online business. Entrepreneurship and innovation is the backbone for Africa. Tune in to the Tribal Root Studio every Thursday with Alina Zahir. Entrepreneurship and innovation. This is the Tribal Root Studio and my name is Alina Zahir and I have colleagues here all are part of the Tribal Root Studio. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to remind you uh, that before we even start, uh, we ask you and uh, implore you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have this channel where you're watching from. We also have the Tribal Root Studio YouTube channel. We also have a Facebook page. Uh, we have a Twitter account. Anywhere, anywhere you want, you could go and find most of our episodes and all the great information that you may need. And please also remember to subscribe, uh, like, share, and comment because that helps us to grow and we would like to grow with you. So today in studio, we are having a special discussion uh, with my brothers here. Uh, so I think before I can even go further, we can have them introduce themselves by both names. Okay, um, Isaac Kano, and uh, I'm a medical student, and I'm so happy to be here and to have this discussion today. I hope you enjoy it and learn from me something. Uh. My name is Amafal Pias and I'm glad to be here in this place. Yeah. Okay. And I, once again, my name is Alina Zahil. And yeah, so we are in the Tribal Studio and today we are talking about the effects of the COVID and especially the lockdowns. Uh, we are looking at uh, those things you could have uh, thought they were really, really uh, downsides, but we're also looking at the good uh, in how we were inspired or how we shifted. <laughs> it shifted most of us, it shifted most of our friends and relatives, and we saw a very big shift in the world. And basically today, uh, we, we put our focus on the young people, especially those who were going to school, uh, like secondary school, uh, up primary school, how they were able to now fit in this environment, being able to live alongside their parents, uh, with their relatives, interacting with the communities, and getting so much involved in the daily activities of running uh, their communities. Uh, so uh, I think I'm not going to go further than that. I will also let my brother here, Kano, mm. say something about, about the topic. Yeah, of course, uh, we are looking at the, the some of the effects that uh, COVID brought during COVID and after COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are seeing uh, so many things that people had to adjust and adapt in, uh, in, the, in the COVID period. Mm. That, uh, you see, apparently right now, um, the, the, COVID, the COVID effect is reducing, like the COVID itself is going down. Mm. Yeah, worldwide we're seeing that uh, the economies are opening up, but then there are some 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 things that we did while we were in COVID. We we adjusted and adapted new habits mm. and new tactics that mm. uh, we're doing in in COVID. Like for example, entrepreneurs. Mm. Yeah, mm. people had to think out of the box to make sure that they can earn a living. Yeah. to see all of surviving mm -hmm. the, in the times. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think some of those things should not be dropped out because the economy has now opened and uh, we are back to normal. I think uh, some of those things should keep on. For example, if you, if you invented an online business, because uh, that's uh, what trended most online things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, someone can be online and uh, 
is able to communicate and do something, do some business, mm -hmm. for example, graphics. Mm -hmm. uh, you, 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 do, you do something online. Yeah, like you do online shopping, you start selling clothes online, selling shoes online, like all those things. I think uh, those habits should continue even to the students who have gone back to school, campus. You can still develop it more and uh, make a, a good progress out yeah. of it. Uh, because uh, what you're saying is is right, uh, you know they say when life throws uh, lemons at you, you make lemonade. Mm. So COVID, the COVID lockdown mm. uh, inspired most of us to think outside the box, as you say. Mm. Now the problem is, why should we stop thinking out outside the box? Because now the economies are opening up, mm. the COVID is kind of reducing. Why should we drop okay. those very adjustments we had made that were helping like they have helped us to survive mm. they have helped us to grow mm. and i think we should enforce them mm. i think we shouldn't drop them we should find a space for them just that uh, most people have now gone back to normal and most people are likely to tell you ah now it's no more and things are a bit now tied up busy this mm -hmm. one this way but then if you find space for something you you never know what the future has you get yeah, like we have been hearing this variant after this variant, what if it strikes yeah, again? Yeah, yeah. So we have to put now it in plan that mm. we have an option, another option. We, yeah. we, we have to fight. Yeah, like uh, people who have fight. been uh, doing saloon work, people who have been, uh, yeah, saloons at a point had to close. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've been only doing uh, at, at a bar, you get, you've been working in a bar. Bars have been closed for such a long time. How have you been surviving? Mm. How has that person been surviving? You mm. get, mm. yeah. But you know now when we talk about this uh, in uh, in that very COVID time, mm. is uh, here in Uganda is when we had a lot of uh, other bad habits. Also, we could be here talking and then someone says, Ah, the Gambia should go on. <laughs> you get. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think the good habits, the good survival instincts that uh, we developed. Not those bad ones, because in that time is when we saw thieves walking in with, with live cameras seeing them, but they don't care, they're walking in to steal. And we jump here, we up and down, uh, people were looking for ways of surviving, stealing. So we are not really talking about those bad practices. Okay. Yeah, we are talking about the good habits that we we generated during the COVID. It's like, uh, first, like how many of what examples of the good habits or the good adjustments that were you able to see during the COVID uh, lockdowns? To me, at first, it was hard. It was hard time, but I later realized I had to do something of my own. Mm -hmm. uh, before, I was just learning production. You were learning music production? Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. So when this COVID came in, I was stuck, the situation was hard. And uh, at a certain extent, I was dormant, so I came up with an idea of, you know, doing this audio production. Yes. Mm -hmm. And now I cop up, yes. now people call me a producer, you know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> producer. Yeah. Now, you see, now like you have the time, you have the time as uh, the lockdown has really put you in a position to mm. focus. Yeah, yeah. You are learning a skill. Yeah. That's that's beautiful. Mm. So me, me basically, my experience is really touching mm. for me. I don't know for others. Mm. In the community where I live, I was able to see young boys mm. and girls in the teen age working at shops of mm. their parents. Mm. And actually, there's a, there's a friend in my neighborhood. She's a woman. She had a young boy of like maybe 15 years. And now when they went back to school, she was telling me and saying, my business was doing so fine because he was here. And now she feels like <laughs> everything has like gone back to... This. So the boy was very good with customer care. He was energetic. He was waking up very early. He, he knew how to negotiate like... He, he really had the skill of, of business. Mm. And now, me, I was thinking about it this way. Now, this, this boy is like many others, they have gone back to school. Mm. In our schooling system, you never get a chance to, to train in things like this. Yeah, yeah, 
And at the same time, these are the very survival skills that your parents are able to look after you, mm -hmm. raise you, educate you. Mm -hmm. and that is their source of income. And now the problem I'm, I'm, I'm talking about right now is the very sources of income, the very channels where our parents get income, mm -hmm. are not being passed down mm -hmm. to the young ones. Mm -hmm. Like if you have a very successful chicken business, mm -hmm. you find like you have three kids or four, they are not learning the skill. The skill. Mm -hmm. They are not learning the business. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have actually also met uh, these uh, people who treat uh, diseases using traditional medicine. Mm -hmm. It's herbalists. I always ask them most of the time, if you know how to mix this herb to create a medicine that can heal children from stomachache and worms, mm -hmm. if you're not training your child mm -hmm. after you are gone, mm -hmm. where will people go? Uh, and by the way, it is in the COVID time mm -hmm. that we discovered a lot of people coming up with uh, with herbs. Yes. Treating every plant was a herb. Yeah. But there are those people who knew which herb was, mm -hmm. was good, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like uh, I have my friend, uh, my friend has his mom, who is uh, very good with those herbs. Mm. He can tell you now when you have a stomach ache or diarrhea, just get this boiled eat and take. Yeah, when you sure. have flu, it, mm. flu is not an issue you yeah. have. You just yeah. get uh, this eucalyptus, mm -hmm. boil it and steam yourself, mm -hmm. add there this and this. Mm -hmm. So when the COVID came, they never suffered for them. They Good. didn't suffer. There is one I, I think most of us. Mm. <laughs> I was also in my village. Like every home in my, my village, they were really, really uh, venturing into. Um. Every day, you mm. see them in the bushes picking these herbs. Mm. Mm. And then they, they do the cooking, they do the steaming. It became like a habit and culture. Mm. And then, of course, I remembered like some years ago, there were very many people in Uganda who were demonizing herbalists. Mm. Demonizing them to the extent that you could call them witch. Yeah, witch doctors. Yeah, like uh, isolating them from society, like mm. making them like unwanted. Mm. So at the time that COVID comes, we are now forced. I think it's just an association whereby uh, people associate uh, everyone who, who knows something about herbs to be a, a witch doctor because most times when they go to the witch doctor they, they receive herbs which they don't even know uh -huh. so <laughs> you think that uh, anyone who knows about herbs is, is a, a witch, witch doctor, doctor. I, I yet when you yet when you learn about uh, things like uh, pharmacy mm -hmm. agriculture science mm -hmm. you learn a lot of these things uh, yeah. these uh, these plants they are plants you get and they are their leaves their roots and uh, sap can be can be very good in treatment of yeah and it's out of these most of these herbs that yeah. these whites they came and uh, extract, the, extract medicine. the medicine true yeah and I don't think there's any of us I think here I don't mm. think any of us like grew up without the herb <laughs> <laughs> yeah herb most are, most the, of the initial the treatments were, yeah, so the, the initial herbs. vaccine was the herb like mm, the mother yeah, 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 would yeah. do this mouth to mouth mm. and then also the other birth they mm. they have but mm. yeah. uh, and i think our strength comes from that actually mm. the world knows that mm. covid didn't really ravage africa the way it did other other continents mm. they probably don't know the reason why but mm. this <laughs> our trick is just we have yeah yeah i think we know a lot we have we still have you know the problem is eh? africa we are still blessed that uh, we still have a lot of herbs most yes. most countries like now you go to us if you find a, a place which is a shrubby and uh, i think you have to move a, a long distance to reach find one. but here everywhere there are herbs yeah, you yeah. can just be walking outside your compound there are herbs everywhere yeah. even in kampala within kampala mm -hmm. you still have places which are, are, are bushy and have all these things i just pray that we, we don't lose this because you know things come industrialization and uh, mm. urbanization mm. and you see like most of the ecosystems being encroached on like the forests the mm. big forests like mm. that's a threat mm. to our existence mm. the whole ecosystem works mm. uh, it works in unison uh, mm. you need these small organisms in the soil as much as you need the, the, the plants mm. and your survival depends on the existence of the of the rest Mm. So like I think that was a, a very good example. Mm. 
Mm. Like we saw people venture into herbal medicine mm. during the COVID lockdown. And mm. our point in this program is, why should we drop that practice? Mm. No one should say, the COVID is gone, so now we can now start demonizing the herbs again. Mm. I think we should enforce it and make sure like it becomes a part of our lifestyle. Mm. So because we don't know what lies ahead. Yeah. We don't know what's in the future. Yeah, I think uh, um, for, for the case of the herbs, I think uh, we should just add value to it. Mm -hmm. Instead of uh, instead of dropping it, study them more about it right. and find a way of not only looking at COVID, mm -hmm. and then you find a way of solving other other other, other, other illnesses, illnesses that are in community. Because mm -hmm. COVID came in and it struck hard as if it was the only illness affecting mm -hmm. us, but the other illnesses that you find people are struggling yes. with skin issues. You have digestive issues, cancers. you have cancers, all those mm. things. Why can't we also try to engage them and find a way of solving also them? Yeah. So like, I also think now, like at school, the teachers and the, the, the schooling system, like the whole ministry of education and everything, they also need now to look at the curriculum. Yeah, mm. way. Yeah. They need to look at the curriculum this way. These young people who have been uh, in, in the villages mm. have been learning mm. to live in the villages, to survive, to do businesses, to start entrepreneurial projects. Mm. And mm. This, this kind of learning, they don't get it at school. Mm. And I think it's the very reason why we have uh, many, many, many young I people graduating. Uh, uh, they won't get employment for 10 years or more. Mm -hmm. They are looking for jobs where the jobs don't exist. Mm -hmm. And also, now there's this false image of uh, a person who is educated is having the papers and approaching some office for a job. Mm -hmm. They're not talking about starting business, small enterprises in the communities. Mm -hmm. They think like that is for the oh, uneducated. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a very dangerous misconception that needs to be uprooted. Mm. And I think because now the young people have gotten this experience during the COVID, like you can really, you can do this business. Mm. You can sell bananas, you can I be the best bananas. chicken farmer, you can, uh, you know, even the, the fruit, the fruit, mm. the fruit business was doing so well yeah, in, but you during know. COVID because mm. people are like, they said if you want to heal from COVID, you need to take fruits Fruit. and vegetables and mm -hmm. the vitamin C. So mm. the fruit business was thriving. Um, lemons became very expensive. Yes, <laughs> the lemons became very yes, expensive. Yeah, people, people did uh, take lemon very serious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as you you go to buy a lemon and they give you like uh, forty lemons that are very at yeah. like one thousand shillings, yes. Ugandan shillings. I know. But right now you go there, they give you the the price every lemon. One, <laughs> one. Yeah, they tell one you thousand. one lemon one. is one thousand. <laughs> so. That's a big, a big uh, eye opener. Mm, and I think uh, uh, most of the uh, the areas that uh, I think uh, considering Africa and Uganda in specific, uh, people should so much look at uh, agriculture also, not forgetting it because it's one of our backbones. It is life. Yeah. Agriculture so, is uh, life. Like uh, if you if you look at a family without uh, an agricultural background. Mm -hmm. It is really the something missing you get yeah. because uh, it really cuts cuts down a lot of costs. Yes. If you have uh, if you have a garden whereby you have at least food, you can plant maize, mm. you can plant uh, bananas, hmm? you can plant uh, other other crops, food crops, and then you can plant beans. Uh, it reduces the cost. You are oh, going yeah. to buy. You are going to buy cooking oil. Mm -hmm. and then you you end up buying again also flour. Mm -hmm. You buy. You yeah, buy tomorrow. Sure. You buy. You buy. Uh, you buy all these spices. You're buying mm -hmm. everything. You get. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, now the the, the COVID input that, that COVID time, okay, where but you're not much. working, money is not coming in. You get. You're on standby. You're on standstill. Yeah, people have lost jobs. You get. Mm -hmm. So how are people surviving? You get. Survival becomes difficult, and people start crying out, and you know. All those things. So I feel like if we adopt that system of whereby, even if you're in town, even if you are you are you are settled in town, you should have at least uh, land somewhere, either in a village 
where you are cultivating. Yes. Because we still have land in Uganda. Yes. I, and I think now with education, some of these practices need to be, uh, they need to be made basic education. Because I think in a setting of a school, that is why you would have like the whole school mandatory. They must train in planting vegetables. Like everyone must know that. Most schools have some land, extra mm -hmm. land. Like you would say now, like everyone who is at this school is going to have to train. Because at the end of the day, everything you talk about is going to, to go back to you being able to have good health. To, to be able to have food in your stomach, to be able to, to, to feed well. Mm -hmm. and, and most of the people can't afford to buy most of the things they need. Mm -hmm. So at least vegetables and fruits, mm -hmm. like make it basic that every African child. Mm -hmm. And I think tribal roots, tribal roots, we have that program coming. Mm -hmm. Like we, we are going to take the agriculturalists, yeah. our experts to the schools, Mm. To interest the schools to, to introduce that skill, to introduce that, make it mm. basic. Mm. Like that's basic knowledge that everyone needs. Mm. It's like for the girls, every girl, there are things every girl should learn. Mm. Uh, attending a home, cooking, mm. raising kids. Mm. Like if you don't, if these kids don't get this kind of education at school, this education doesn't yeah, exist yeah. anywhere else yeah, yeah. because mm. they are always at school. Mm. So like <coughs> now. We are looking at now uh, encouraging the school setting mm. to become a hub where the children, the teenagers, can acquire all the skills needed for them to survive mm. even when they get out of school. Mm. So that this business of we left school and there are no jobs mm. and the next thing you see all the youth on the streets mm. protesting yeah. this government doesn't <laughs> like us. Mm. 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 So like the government really has nothing on you mm. well, for the things you should have learned in your home mm. like that's why they say charity begins at home mm. there are things like the school won't give you mm. so like i think this is this is the point i was very pleased when i saw like teenagers i was so really fascinated mm. teenagers engaging in businesses in a better way mm. on a higher level mm. like running the business and i was like now if this is this was their life like if this was the life, like at 17, 16, mm. these children yeah, are allowed to into business. Mm. And I think this is why countries like China and India, I mean, let me leave India out. China, <coughs> there's a point China was like Africa or worse. Mm. Now, where China is, uh, the world envies. And China is actually competing to be a world power, or if it's already not. Mm. But when we uh, read about China's revolution, it was not any kind of revolution, it was just culture. It was a cultural revolution. Mm -hmm. These people were forced to speak their language. Mm -hmm. These people were forced to support their, their arts. Mm -hmm. You know, like arts you, you watch on the movies. Yeah. Like every child was forced into karate and mm -hmm. these other things. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing is industrialization. Mm -hmm. These people were directed into manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So kids of nine, eight years mm -hmm. were training on the jobs to manufacture something. Mm -hmm. They were not being sent to school to read some books and answer questions, mm -hmm. which I think is outrageous. <laughs> because like this is the kind of education I got all my years read this book I'll ask a question and you'll answer what you read in the book and in my life I'm like so am I bright or is that really smart because what you asked me to answer you already gave it to me I read this book you are the one who gave me the book now you're asking me to answer the question you know I already know because you gave me the book so like Nothing is being added on my. <laughs> so like now, this kind of education that should allow the children now to be like, that's a CD player, how is it made? That's a camera. What's in the camera? Like, what are those parts in the camera? How can I assemble this? How is the bicycle assembled? Like, this is the kind of apprenticeship 
that the Chinese were getting at a very young age. Mm -hmm. And now we are at the age whereby in Africa, well, so is an, my Chinese. phone is Chinese. Mm -hmm. This is Chinese. Mm -hmm. We even have cups in Chinese. Mm -hmm. Spoons and, and everything <laughs> made in China, even matchboxes. Mm -hmm. What a shame. <laughs> like we have matchboxes, razor blades and safety pins and needles in made in China in every African home. Mm -hmm. How else do you want the world to rule you? That is how nations become powerful. Mm. So like, now, what is this kind of education that is not allowing our graduates to come out of school as manufacturers? Mm. You know, to me, when I was teen, I was, I think, when I was teen, senior one, I was like, I wish they could just, I don't know, when you enter a second like this, they just teach you some, something you want as you, personal. Like for me, I want to be a doctor. There and then, start there. Start, uh, the start, start, start the subject instead of wasting four year, four years mm -hmm. in secondary. Mm -hmm. You don't know what you are going to start. Mm -hmm. uh, two years in HSC, you don't know which kind of job you are going to do. <laughs> no, <laughs> oh, I have a story like that. It's a story of another day. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a long one. The dilemma I got when I was in school, mm -hmm. it was dramatic. Mm -hmm. Like those school between. From senior four to high school, mm. I, I literally fought with all the teachers. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And they were forcing me here, and I was like, no. Mm. <laughs> so you know, if you don't go here, we are mm. going to send you out of school. Mm. Go bring your parents. Like they punished me. Mm. So like story of another day, but it was dramatic, and I remember so well. And I think like this is most of the people's stories. Mm. Parents and teachers and the system somehow points you in a direction that they they know is the way but in practicality is not mm -hmm. so like now I, I don't know about the policy makers I don't know if they hear this mm -hmm. but the best way to solve unemployment mm -hmm. is to train people to create jobs, to create jobs. Mm -hmm. that's the best way and anyone that has tried mm -hmm. to be learning at the job knows what I'm talking about. The mm -hmm. experience is priceless. You can't buy it with any kind of money. Mm -hmm. So like that's, that's all what COVID taught us. Mm -hmm. The COVID lockdowns taught us. I, I think I did my first concert, uh, virtual concert during the lockdowns. Mm -hmm. I never thought about that mm -hmm. for all the 10 years I've been singing. I never thought about it. Because I was always thinking like, now if you have to do a concert, you have to buy tickets and then book, <laughs> book venues. And then <laughs> you have to do all of these things and then travel, mm. book hotels. Mm. Now like, now the lockdown comes and you're like, people can watch me from anywhere in the world. Mm. This is a world of technology. Everything and is here. And you still earn from it. Yes. Mm. Mm. So like that was my experience. And now I'm here thinking, why shouldn't we maintain the pace? Mm. Why should we why why should we back down? We should because incorporate it in yeah. the norm. And then tribal roots tribal roots ideology is a technology centered approach mm. uh, of youth and we say a youth led working solutions approach. Now, I don't think uh, the older generations get what we are talking about. Mm. It is uh, the young people that understand the pain. Mm. It's actually important that Young people are reminded all the time that the future that we hope to see, mm. or the future they hope to see, mm -hmm. is the future they make now. Mm -hmm. And if you want to rely on the older generations to shape your future, you may be lying because the older generations are not going into that future. Mm -hmm. Only you who is going there mm -hmm. must know how to go there. Mm -hmm. And you must know how to, to shape it, make it look the way you want to arrive, what do you want to find? So the young people, you have no excuse to give to the world to say, we didn't make this because the older generation did this. Mm -hmm. You have all the energy and power. Mm -hmm. All you need is the will to mm -hmm. keep moving forward, mm -hmm. to make sure you create the life you want. Yeah, true. so many people are out there like uh, the um, uh, people are complaining of education, education. But of recent, uh, COVID taught us about me personally. I discovered that uh, when you, when you, when you go online, there are so many schools online. 
Yes. And you can really, you, it, it showed us the value of education is not only about attending a mm -hmm. class or going to a classroom, going into a room mm -hmm. and you have a teacher in front of you to teach you. Mm -hmm. You discover that even on your phone, smartphone, so you can <coughs> study and graduate. Even on a, on, on a PC you study, you can apply online, study here and you graduate, you go and get your credentials and you still work and earn a living like it is now the, the, the there's some enlightenment that like covid didn't only kill people or affect oh. us <laughs> it also opened our minds to yeah. something we have to also we have to always look at the positive side yeah yeah it's what they used to call the necessary evil it was the evil that was necessary <laughs> so that we would be better people. And right now, mm. I also would like to say Tribal Root Studio is, is a, a brainchild <laughs> mm -hmm. of the lockdowns and the other experiences we've had in the past. Mm. Tribal Root Studio and the work we've been done, doing in the past, like the AFAD work and all the other work, has mostly been done by people from different parts of the world. We have UK, we have USA, we have uh, Barbados, we have <coughs> Sudan, we have Somalia, we have Kenya, we have Tanzania, and we have Nigeria, we have Ghana. Like, we have members from across the world. Mm -hmm. And they're all looking in this direction. We must build a youth movement mm -hmm. that will inspire the youth to be the change makers that we want. Mm -hmm. Now, do these people meet quite often? No. Have they ever held a conference where they sit in a boardroom and say, now here we are? No. Mm -hmm. These people are able to bring their efforts together because we are now connected. The world is very small. Mm -hmm. Technology makes it possible. Sure. Now, someone from the old school ways will come and tell you now, for you to do this, you have to go to Ethiopia and mm -hmm. be at the African Union and call all these members mm -hmm. of the African countries and then talk about this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't need that. <laughs> for God's sake, they've been they've been meeting for a very long time. Mm. A very long time and still things don't look like they are moving. Yeah. So people like need to wherever they are. Mm. The change you need starts from wherever you are. Mm. And that's the change we saw during the COVID lockdowns. Mm. And also I would like to say one of the bad things I saw during was uh, uh a very big number of young girls were impregnated during the lockdowns in thousands. I think it's disheartening and a big blow, but at the same time, it also shows our state, mm -hmm. the moral compass, mm -hmm. what our society has turned into. Mm -hmm. Because now, don't tell me these girls were impregnated away from their homes. Yes, some of them are away, but most of them were in their homes. Mm. So now, this shows you, like, parents have little control mm. of their kids. At the same time, the moral standards have decayed mm. to that point. At the same time, these girls have no guidance. So right now, we see that people are going back to school, and most of the girls are pregnant, or some of them are breastfeeding, and they are young. And that all constitutes irresponsibility. And that is what most of our youth are being training. Fine! You are pregnant. At the end of the day, you are a mother. Every mother and father are going to be responsible for the children they brought forth. So the irresponsibility goes that deep. It is also transferred from the older generation. There's, these are many girls from the broken families where there are no fathers. Mm. And they think it's normal. So they will go ahead and get pregnant and say, my mother got pregnant with me, did have a father, <laughs> so I can also survive and do that. Mm. So like the family has also broken. Mm. And those are all of these are things that need to be restored. So like mm. the COVID lockdown wasn't bad. Mm. It was a big lesson, mm. and we can use it to shape the future that we want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. ladies and gentlemen, this is again the Tribal Roots uh, TV in the Tribal Roots Studio, and today we are having a great discussion about 
what the effects of the COVID and lockdown were, negative and positive, and how we could harness whatever experience we got to make sure we are moving forward, to make sure we, we are making our world better. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and leave a comment. And if there's anything you want us to speak about, address, you can still share it in the comment section and we will, we will be uh, looking at it. Uh, we also want to thank our Patreon family. You can check the Patreon link and become a patron uh, because we really need you for us to build this uh, great, great movement. Uh, from the Tribal Studio, I say thank you and blessings.